In this video, we're going to take a look at model display. So here I have a file open called model display IPT from our working files directory. And as you can see, it's just a simple little part. It doesn't have a lot of, I would say, contour definition to it. It doesn't really stand out inside the display as you look at it, especially as I have a gray on gray sort of scenario here. So what I'm going to do is just override the color really quickly. I can do that by going to the top here and overriding the part color, this pull down to a different color style. So I'm going to choose cadet blue. This would be the common color that I use throughout the video series. So it's a little bit different color. It stands out a little bit better. But for me, I like to see actually the contrasted lines here. So what I want to do is start adjusting my visual style. Now, a couple places you can get visual styles. You can get them from the view tab, the visual style pull down. For me, that's too many extra clicks though. So I've already added it to my quick access navigation bar over here. Okay, and if you missed that in another video, you just click on the little customize here. You can add visual styles. So the default for the software is to come in in a shaded view like you see here. But I really prefer these shaded with edges. It gives my part a little more definition when I'm looking at it. A little bit more, I guess, line contrast on the edges. I really like to see that. Some of the other styles we have in there, we have shaded with hidden edges. So if I tilt this up over a little bit, you can start seeing hidden lines. We also have a wireframe mode. Very hard to see on this kind of background. This works a little bit better if your background has been changed to a single color. And also more of a contrasting color, like white or black. I also have wireframe with hidden edges. Wireframe with visible edges only. Again, kind of hard to see on this gradient background. We have a monochromatic, which changes everything to a shade of gray. This works especially if you have an assembly, there'll be different shades of gray. If you switch over to watercolor, it gives you a very kind of canvas type look to this, which is okay for like maybe a, a nice quirky kind of you know visual image for product media or for, for PowerPoint. But if you model this way, it's very difficult. So I would recommend not using watercolor unless you're doing a screen grab of some kind. We also have illustration in here, which kind of gives you a sketchy kind of look, also good for quotes. And the last one at the top here is actually realistic. So if I go to this one, you don't really see much of a change here because I actually have something called ray tracing turned off. Let me go to my view tab and we'll dig into more of these settings. So here I can turn ray tracing on and it tries to make it look a little bit more realistic. Now with this cadet blue color, it's a very flat color. Well, what if I change that to a shinier color, like maybe a polished blue chrome? Well, that looks distinctly different, right? It looks very shiny, very polished. If I rotate around while I'm in here, it kind of pixelates because the ray tracing is trying to catch up to it. So ray tracing is great for these kind of still images you might take. But, you know, if you take this as a still image, you still kind of got this gray background. Don't worry, we'll fix that next. But for now, I'm going to turn off this uh, ray tracing and go back to a shaded with edges. So even there, you can see it's still a little bit nicer with that different color on it. So color really does matter. I'm going to leave this on this blue chrome color. Now up here on my application options, I'm going to go into our options down here at the bottom from the menu. And on this colors option here, I can change to a different color scheme. Now I'm going to use this default style throughout the course, winter night, gradient color. But let's say I want to get a good screen image for a quote or a presentation. I might switch over here to presentation mode and I'll switch this background to a single color. So it gives me that kind of whitewash background where it might look good in a Word document. And if I turn realistic style on now, that looks pretty sharp, right? It looks pretty good. Rotating that around and such. Well, maybe you don't want kind of the material color to show up because you're cheap on color printing, maybe. Let me turn this off, go to wireframe with visible edges. So you can see now with that visible edge only option, it looks really good against that white background of a single color. Well, maybe you want to show depth of these holes. Maybe you want to show like you know, some ambient shadows in there. Well, also up on this view tab, we have some shadow control. So I'll go here and turn on ambient shadows. So it gives a little bit more of a depth to it. Let's say we want to do more of a eye pleasing view. Well, that's why I have my perspective and orthographic toggle over here as well. So you can add this to your navigation bar, or you can have it accessed up here as well in your view tab. So I'm going to go to perspective. Kind of gives me a nice look to that. Now, if I want to change my depth of field, it's a little bit of finger yoga. 
you do Control, Shift, and F3 all at the same time, and then click and drag with my mouse. That way I can change my depth of field for my amount of perspective viewing. So this looks pretty sharp so far for a nice screen image. You may not model this way all the time, but it looks really good if you're trying to capture something out of here. Now, if you wanted to capture this as an image, you could use a screen capturing software like Snagit. You could use you know, the print screen functionality of your computer. You could use the snipping tool that's inside of Windows 7 and Windows 8. You could also go up to the Inventor button, and you could do an export to an image. Now, if you do this, it's going to also take everything that's in this graphical screen here. It'll take your UCS triad. It'll take your cube. It'll take your navigation bar. So you could turn these off through your user interface. You can turn the view cube and the navigation bar off and on. This is on the view tab on the Windows panel. You can turn this triad off in your application options. I recommend leaving it on, of course, unless you're doing something like this. This will be found on the part. We can turn off the coordinate system indicator inside the sketch mode. Inside of your normal display, though, down here we have our origin 3D indicator. Let me kind of scoot this off to the side so you can see this. So I can turn off the labels. I can turn off the indicator, and it'll go away. Generally, you want those things on, though, when you're modeling normally. Okay. Now, since I'm here, I have an ulterior motive to getting to this dialog. Okay, this is, again, application options on the display tab. We have the appearance defaults. So if I have this set to document settings, Every time I save the document, the next time I open it up, it'll be saved using these display options of, you know, perspective and the illustrative visual style or the wireframe hidden edges only, ambient shadows turned on and whatnot. Well, there's times where you may not want that. You might always want to open up the file where it be a part or an assembly with the same settings every time. For that, you should use the application options and preset your settings. So I can do that here. So every time I open a file, I like shaded with edges. I might like ambient shadows turned on, but you know, let's kind of step back and think for a moment. If I open up a 10,000 or 50,000 piece assembly, if I have this set to realistic, if I have this set to monochromatic or watercolor, if I have this set to something where these shadows are turned on, that will slow down my computer. So I usually try to stick with something pretty basic, shaded with edges, I normally don't turn ambient shadows on unless I know I'm not going to be working in, you know, multi-thousand piece assemblies. So, you know, make some good choices here in your display settings so that every time you open a file, it's how you want to see it. The default for Inventor is shaded. I prefer shaded with edges. So that's what I'll be using. So now, if I open up another file, let me open up our little loader IAM here in our working file set. You just update the assembly there. You can see it keeps the same color scheme background. That's set by the application. Here I have the shaded with edges as it opens instead of just being shaded. You know, here you can start to see more contrast if you come in here and turn on your ambient shadows. So it makes it really kind of pop and stand out. But let's take a look at a few more settings. So I'm going to change back to a shaded with edges visual style. I'm going to leave on my ambient shadow still. I'm going to turn on this thing called the ground plane and also reflections. So these are accessed up here on your view tab. And what this is using is what is considered the top of the view cube for the reflective style. If I want this to be the top, which it kind of is, well, let's be honest, I can right click on this face of the cube and say, let's set that current view as my top. Doing so will reorient how my cube sets, so I can get a better idea of the reflective environment there. And there's settings you can jump in here on, so you can adjust your fall off, you can adjust how much your component blurs as it goes through the reflection. So you might really like this. If you don't want to see the ground plane, I can turn the ground plane off and just see the reflection. But different settings there made to create different imagery you might like. If you have textures, you can also turn textures on and off. For realistic styles. So if you are doing a sand casted metal, you can actually see the bump map that's created by the sand cast. One of the last things I want to show you about this particular area up here though, is the idea of a different lighting style. Now you might just think that these are just lights turning on and off, but these are actually environmental lights. So it's going to load up an IBL environment. Let me choose something that this would fit in pretty well, like an empty lab. 
it's going to change the lighting style as well as put this into an empty lab. Now in this empty lab, basically it's not solid geometry, it's just an environment that gets loaded into Inventor. So if I zoom out and I scroll around in here with my orbit, you can see it looks like an empty lab. It's pretty nice actually. And what's better about it is I didn't have to model it. So let me zoom into this. I may look at it this way here. I'll change over to my perspective orientation. I'll turn on my realistic style. Now I do have a lot of shininess in these materials, so that's why you're seeing it be very, very shiny. I could also just switch over to maybe just a shaded view if I'm happy with that. It kind of gets rid of those stark edge lines that I actually prefer in normal modeling. But it allows me to get a nice little shot here inside of an environment. Now, there's other environments up here, which this wouldn't be very good to see in, such as the old warehouse. If I switch over to that, it's an enormous warehouse. So this is good for a good piece of capital equipment to put into a design, take a screen grab, and like, oh, look, it's in a factory. So, but this little tiny guy here, it doesn't really look the best. You know, maybe if I want to do that, that's kind of cool looking, but, you know, realistically, it doesn't really fit into this environment. So there's a couple of other ones in there. The default is really the two lights. The plain room isn't too bad. It's just a plain room you have for a lighting style. And there's different settings you can adjust with this as well. Now, most of the stuff that I'm looking at here doesn't make you a better engineer. It doesn't make you a better designer. It makes you more appealing to marketing and sales guys. So what you're seeing here is what you would consider an ancillary part of your job. Now, if you really like viewing things a certain way, of course, there are certain visual styles in here that do make you a better engineer. Now, obviously, realistic is not one of them. Watercolor is not one of them. Now, if you model with watercolor turned on, you might need your head examined. So some things in here are just flashy. But other things look great on engineering documentation as well. All right, I'm going to switch back to another file. So down at the bottom, you can see I do have tabs down here. Let me switch back over to model display. And the next tool I'm going to show you is something you can do in both the part and the assembly environment. These are ideas of section viewing. So if I go up here, I can do a half section view, a quarter, a three quarter section view as well. This end section view is basically how you tell it to stop sectioning. So let me start with just a half section. I'll click on this flat plane here, and I can dynamically drag this through and see inside of the part. Once I have it to a depth that I want, I just approve that value. Now I can see inside of it there. If I right click, you can see I can repeat that to start over again. If I want to tell it to stop viewing it that way, I'll just click here and say end section view to stop viewing it in that manner. So let me go back over to the loader and you'll see you can do the same thing over here. This time I'll do a three quarter section view. Here I'll pick one plane first and drag that section through. And I'll move this back another negative 1.75. I'm going to hit continue here instead of apply because we have to select yet another plane. So I'll start here and drag this one back. We'll have it go through that part of the cage there. Say negative 2.625. We'll approve that. And there's my three quarter section view. And I can orbit around this to view around here. I can also right click and repeat that. Now, what if I want a different part of the three-quarter section view? So let me end this, and we'll do it again with a three-quarter section. Again, I'll choose here, and I want a negative 1.75. And I'll choose here, I want a negative 2.625. So it goes back that far. I can actually right-click before I approve this and tell it to flip my sections around. So I can go to different portions to do different three-quarter section views. I can also say, give me a quarter section view instead. And flip that around until I get what I really want to visualize. I'll say OK. And there's my three-quarter section view. And I can leave that open as long as I want and keep viewing it. And when I'm done, I'll just use the end section view to turn everything back on. So let me return this back to our style that we're going to use for the course for the colors. I'm going to go back to my application options. On my colors tab, I'm going to return this back to a winter night with a gradient color. And I keep it this way because it's the default and it actually works best when you're looking at different sketches and part modeling techniques. 
But again, for visualization, it's okay to be changing this stuff. So that's why we spent a little bit extra time doing it. So this was our look at model display.